Hey guys, my name is Massimo, and today I am happy to say that the Second Assault DLC for Battlefield 4 has finally arrived. I've been waiting a long time to play on these maps. Caspian Border back in Battlefield 3 was easily one of my favorite maps. While I'm not the biggest fan of Operation Metro just because of all the grenade spam, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, it can be a very fun map to play on when you're playing with a, a lower player count server. And so I was very interested to see what DICE had done to improve upon these maps because they said it wasn't just going to be a visual change. Like there is going to be a visual update because of the Frostbite 3 engine, but I wanted to know how they improved each of the maps maybe to rebalance them slightly in select scenarios and just to see how they all played out and so the first thing that I have to talk about is Caspian Border. This map looks incredible. It's bright, it's vibrant, and I want to go on a limb and say that DICE did more to rebalance this map compared to all of the other maps that was introduced in the Second Assault DLC. It still looks and feels like Caspian Border, don't get me wrong, it's got Hilltop and Forest and all of the other objectives when you're playing on Conquest, but they've put in new objects, rocks are placed differently compared to the Battle for Three counterpart, and then you have the, the large sweeping changes like the tower and the wall. Uh, taking out the tower is always a blast. It gives you another route to move from the forest on over into Hilltop, which is always useful when you're trying to flank and take out your targets, but I as for the wall, I don't know how I feel about this because initially I thought it was cool. It would, I thought that it would allow you to push up onto the A and B capture points a little bit easier and block line of sight. But I didn't realize that it was basically sniper heaven up there. It's it's not as bad as the radio tower back in Battle of the Three was. That that was annoying when someone was able to use the spawn beacon to parachute on up to parachute on up onto the tower itself. It was almost impossible to take out one of those snipers, and they pretty much were just a pest throughout the entire round. And while I would not say it's, it's as bad as that, it is a little annoying when you're trying to play the objective and you constantly hear snipers trying to take pot shots at you because they have this great little perch on all of these different nodes on the wall itself to try to take you out. And so I don't know how I feel about it just yet. It may just be something that I have to get used to and, and realize that I have to take a different route when I'm trying to push on over to different objectives. Uh, but it is one thing that does get a little annoying, at least as of right now. Uh, as for Operation Metro, I was honestly a little disappointed with this revamp. If you love the way it worked back in Battle of the Three, if you love the meat grinder and the grenade spam fest that was this map in the previous game, then you're in luck. It's it's pretty much the same thing. They it, they did add in a couple of flanking routes that normally weren't there, uh, but honestly, you're you're probably not going to notice it. It's only in a few sections of the map itself, and so for the most part, it is Operation Metro in Battle of the Three without the blue tint. And so if you are all into that, then this is going to be fantastic news. But for me, I was never much of a fan of that, and I was really hoping, I was crossing my fingers, that they were going to expand upon this. I was hoping that maybe they were going to allow you to maybe get onto the, the top section of the map itself so that you didn't have to stay in the metro section you could get on to where the buildings were and if they opened that entire section up or if they just gave you maybe not just one more flanking route but like two or three i honestly feel like this map would have so much more potential i realize that would be deviating a lot from the core map itself and some people would probably be upset from that but at least for me, I thought there was a lot more potential for this map, and so I was a little disappointed. Uh, but moving on over into Oman and Firestorm, these were the two maps that I was crossing my fingers that DICE were going to impress me on, because I thought that they were decent maps back in Battlefield 3. I know that Oman was very popular on consoles, but at least for me, I would have much rather preferred Strike a Karkand or like any map from the Aftermath DLC. Aftermath was fantastic. Pick anyone from there. I would have per way preferred that in, in Battlefield 4. But they decided on these two. And so I was crossing my fingers that DICE was going to do something special on them. They were really going to try to rebalance them or do something spectacular that was going to set them, set them apart from their Battlefield 3 counterparts. And I didn't really get that impression over the couple hours I'm playing on both of them. Uh, they look gorgeous, don't get me wrong. When that sandstorm rolls on in when you're playing on Oman, it is incredible. It is probably one of the coolest things that I've seen in the Battlefield franchise, but eventually, it gets old and it doesn't add a whole lot to the map itself. Like sure, it completely obscures your vision. Like trying to snipe someone at long range when that thing is going on is not an easy task or acquiring targets at a distance is quite challenging. And so that does mix up and changes the way that you have to play it. But eventually it gets a little old. It's like, okay, this is very atmospheric. I'm loving what it's doing. 
but will this blow over? And it never appears to do that. And so, yeah, it's, it's cool. I love the aesthetics of it. It does get a little old after a couple of rounds and just constantly playing in the sandstorm itself. Uh, but as for Firestorm, I want to say that DICE selected this map, not because it was a fan favorite, because I don't think it was, but because they wanted to blow everything up. There were a lot of containers back in Battle of the Three that you would have assumed would be flammable and that you would have a nice explosion, but that wasn't the case. It was more of a static map. There were a couple of things that would explode, but for the most part, it was a very static map with only a couple of uh, destructible objects. Uh, but that is not the case now in Battlefield 4. Pretty much every container that you thought you could blow up in Battlefield 3 is now fully destructible. There are nice fireballs flying all over the place, plenty of fire effects, and I want to say that that is the reason why DICE decided to implement this into Second Assault. They wanted to have those fire and levolution moments, and it is it's a cool factor. It is cool, but honestly, like I've been saying, this was not my favorite map back in Battlefield 3. It gets the job done as a map. I would not say it's worthless, but it's just a little disappointing that it wasn't Strike a Carcan or something from the Aftermath DLC. Uh, DICE also reintroduced Capture the Flag with this expansion pack, and while I would say it is very refreshing, I highly recommend playing on lower player count servers when you when you give it a try. If you want to try out 64 man metro, you are more than welcome to, but don't expect to eat to ever touch the flag. It's basically just as bad as 64 man conquest or rush. It's going to be a meat grinder in the middle, and while you may every once in a while push on over towards the enemy base, Good luck trying to get that flag all the way back to your deployment. It just isn't going to happen. I think I joined one round where, miraculously, my team was somehow successful in taking one of the flags, but just do not expect it to happen very often, and you're probably going to need a very, very coordinated team to pull it off, or the enemy team just needs to be absolutely atrocious. Uh, this is also true for the larger maps like Caspian and Firestorm. I, I would still recommend playing on the lower, t the lower player count servers, because then it will actually allow allow you to have an offense and defense. You're not going to have this constant bombardment of the enemy team. It will allow you to flank around, have those successful rounds, and not just have a stalemate all game long. And so if you want to try out Capture the Flag, I highly recommend you do because it is a lot of fun. Play on the lower player count servers. Uh, one thing that I did notice, and I don't know if this was just a problem on my end, it could have just been a problem with my PC, but on a couple of these maps, mainly on Oman and Firestorm, I was getting some pretty big hits to my frame rate, and I don't know if it was just because massive levolution moments were happening around me and I didn't realize it at the time, maybe like the crane was falling down on both of those maps or the tower was falling on Caspian Border, and I just didn't realize those events were occurring, but I want to say that uh, the optimization for a couple of these maps isn't as tip-top shape or as tight as they could have been. I remember back in Battlefield 3, Oman was one of those maps that I always had bad frame rates on. And this was across the board for all of my friends. I would say, hey, are you guys experiencing poor frame rate at this time? And they would say, yeah, absolutely, it's just Oman. And so maybe that poor optimization has just transferred on over into Battlefield 4. Or maybe these, just, these maps just have so much going on that my computer can't handle it. And so I would like to get your guys' take on this. Have you experienced this as well? Is, just, is this just a problem with my PC and maybe I need to upgrade my graphics card? Let me know down below in the comment section, but I want, I want to go out on a limb and say that they're just not as well optimized as they could have been. Uh, but overall, I would say that this is a solid DLC. I like what they did with rebalancing Caspian Border and Operation Metro. And while I'm not the biggest fan of Oman and Firestorm, they're still solid maps. They still are a lot of fun and so if you loved Battlefield 3 and you enjoyed these maps this is going to be the perfect DLC for you and honestly it's just going to be a great uh, thing to hold us over for the Naval Strike DLC which is only about a month and a half and away and I cannot wait for that uh, but yeah guys that is about it for today's video I hope you enjoyed uh, let me know what you think so far about the Second Assault DLC are you enjoying it as much as I am are you a little disappointed let me know down below in the comment section uh, but until tomorrow have a good one and take it easy.